message here about triage. This will be posted on January 27, 2025. We are finishing up here soon with this issue of JABMA from March 15, 2017. And finally, a surgical one that I'm familiar with, surgical management of pivot shift phenomenon in a dog. For those who don't know what pivot shift is, it's what it sounds like. Um, one of their legs pivots, and it's, it's seen as a complication of TPLO, tibial plateau leveling osteotomy, which you can look at my channel for cranial cruciate ligament videos. I think I have two or three parts to it. and talks about TPLO, which you can see in the drawing there, where we make a cut into the bone and rotate the uh, tibial plateau. There are other, <clears throat> there are like 30 surgeries for cranial cruciate ligament rupture in dogs. And so this is one of them, one of the more popular ones. Um, but pivot shift, you get this twisting motion of the leg and it's actually an external rotation, and uh, it's an annoying thing because for some dogs it's just cosmetics, for others it actually affects their gait, and some dogs never get that issue, most don't. So I didn't realize they called it pivot shift phenomenon, but that's what they call it. This is a case study, and it comes out of the Davis Veterinary Specialist in England. Clinical findings this is a 6.8 year, year old male neutered Labrador Retriever Poodle mixed. The dog had a left TPLO done and they noticed a jerking lateral movement to the left stifle joint, which is the pivot shift phenomenon. No signs of discomfort. Radiograph showed healing of the TPLO with only mild joint effusion. The treatment was an arthrotomy. They found no meniscal tears. They removed the previous TPLO plate because osteotomy healed. They placed an extracapsular synthetic ligament-like biomaterial to counteract the internal rotation and it eliminated the pivot shift phenomenon. Then the dog had a right-sided cranial cruciate ligament rupture. They did a TPLO. They noticed that in the surgery, he was developing the same pivot shift on the other leg. So they reinforced that TPLO with the extracapsular implant, and the dog did great. So orthopedic examination shows a sudden jerking lateral movement to the, to the stifle joint. It happens at the end of the stride phase and beginning of the stance phase while the dog walks. There was no cranial tibial thrust for this dog when the tibia was kept sagittally aligned with the femur, but such a sign was noted during internal rotation was applied to the tibia. The cranial subluxation of the tibial plateau in association with internal tibial rotation resulting in sudden lateral change in direction of the stifle joint during weight bearing is referred to as pivot shift phenomenon. So the synthetic braided ligament-like biomaterial was used they placed femoral and tibial bone tunnels drilled over a guide wider using a cannulated drill bit, 3.5 millimeter size drill bit. Implant was inserted, tension was placed by hand, and the implant was secured with square knots at the level of the larger toggle button. And that's in the thumbnail there. I'll show you close up here in a minute. Six weeks after surgery, the pivot shift phenomenon was gone, but then eight weeks later, the dog developed right pelvic limb nameless, indicating a cranial cruciate ligament tear. They did uh, surgery, no meniscal tears were noted, complete rupture of the ACL or the CCL rather. They performed a TPLO. During surgery, no cranial tibial rust sign was detected when the femur and tibia were kept sadly aligned, but a sign was noted when internal tibial rotation was applied. As described, a synthetic biomaterial was placed to counteract internal rotation of the tibia and thereby preventing postoperative development of pivot shift phenomena. Because of the presence of the TPLO plate, the distal end of the tibial tunnel was located distal to the osteotomy cut and cranioproximal to the first proximal lo non-locking screw of the distal tibial segment. So because the first TPLO healed, and they knew that the positioning of this extracapsular synthetic material was going to be in the, in the same realm of the plate. They removed the plate in the first knee, and then they could place the, the prosthetic suture wherever they want. But in this surgery, since the TPLO was just performed, they had to modify the technique. Six weeks later, the dog was fine. Here's a close-up of the radiograph, and there's the toggle button right there, that thing right there. So that's, that's where they had to place it, which is a bit abnormal. Normally, I imagine they want to place it a bit uh, higher on the bone and a bit more caudal on the bone. But anyway, that's the TPLO with the uh, extracapsular uh, suture.
Discussion. Pivot shift phenomenon is poorly described in the veterinary literature. It's been defined as a cranial subluxation of the tibia associated with internal tibial rotation, resulting in a sudden lateral change in direction of the stifle joint during weight bearing. The underlying causes and clinical importance is not fully understood. It is a complication from TPLO, suggesting a complex multifactorial etiology. Findings of research in human medicine regarding this condition in the knee joint would suggest limb conformation and insufficiency of secondary stabilizers to that may play a role with developing pivot shift phenomenon. In dogs, the stifled joint is a complex condylar synovial joint with Numerous soft tissue structures that contribute to rotational and sagittal plane translational stability. During the stance phase of walking, when the stifled joint is in extension, the cranial and caudal cruciate ligaments act as primary restraints against internal rotation and translation in the sagittal plane. And in the medial and lateral collateral ligaments limit internal rotation as well. The medial and lateral menisci act as secondary stabilizers by increasing joint congruity. In humans, excessive motion of the knee joint is also prevented by a reflex arc involving contraction of the caudal thigh muscles and relaxation of the quadriceps femoris muscle, so it is possible that these muscle groups also play a role in stifle stabilization. In a cranial cruciate ligament deficient stifle joint, the roles of primary and secondary stabilizers change where the collateral ligaments and menisci become primary stabilizers to fight against the cranial tibial luxation. The caudal poles of the menisci act as a wedge preventing further tibial subluxation the wedge effect is eliminated after TPLO. Because of the slightly caudal orientation of the lateral collateral ligament, this ligament is less taut when the medial collateral ligament, uh, then the medial collateral ligament when counteracting cranial tibial thrust, allowing for lateral tibial condyle to translate further cranially than the medial tibial condyle, resulting in the degree of internal rotation of the tibia in an extended cranial cruciate ligament stifle joint. All those details you have to know for your surgery boards. Although one study showed that internal tibial rotation was eliminated after TPLO in surgery, and others, uh, TPLO in dogs, another study showed internal tibial rotation was still present. As the tibial plateau slope is reduced, the position of the femoral tibial joint during weight bearing becomes relatively more flexed. With the stifle joint inflection, the lateral collateral ligament becomes lax as its femoral and tibial attachments move closer together, whereas most of the medial collateral ligament remains taut. This allows caudal displacement of the lateral femoral condyle and the lateral tibial condyle, resulting in internal rotation. The pivot shift is not a reported complication of tibial tuberosity advancement. The TTA is another surgery to repair or to compensate for a torn cranial cruciate ligament. Angular and rotational limb deformities have also been reported as possible factors in contributing to pivot shift. TPLO can induce genu varus and poor jig or plate placement in osteotomy type positioning can contribute to tibial varus, both of which can develop pivot shift. Partial or, hemi partial or hemimenisectomy has been identified as a risk factor for developing pivot shift with TPL surgery. In addition, preservation of the remaining cranial cruciate ligament fibers in a stifled joint with partial CCL tear may counteract rotational stability, reducing the risk of postoperative pivot shift. And that's, there's an argument to be made about leaving the cranial cruciate ligament fibers in the joint if there's some that are still intact. Because there's one argument that says if you leave the torn ligament fragments there, then it's going to add to the inflammation of the joint, which is probably true. And that predisposes them to arthritis long term. If, however, you leave the, the portions of the ligament that are, are intact there in the stifle joint, then maybe it contributes to some stability, which also is probably true. So it's tough to say which one you want to go through. I've done both. In humans, muscular compensation is an important mechanism for coping for both translational and rotational instability, secondary to anterior cruciate ligament rupture, and targeted physiotherapy is a vital part of rehabilitation after ACL constructive surgery. In a study involving dogs, pivot shift resolved with recovered satisfactory thigh muscle although the overall rate of thigh muscle atrophy was not assessed, barring direct conclusions that can be made. Conservative management has been reported for treatment of pivot shift, which is typically what I've done. Extracapsular suture technique can eliminate both cranial caudal and internal rotational instability. 
Although such techniques can also cause external rotation of the tibia, the extra capsular technique used for this dog was quick and easy to perform. The implant material was a multi-filament, ultra-high strength tape. It increases resistance to cyclic loading and has less risk of early loss of tension compared with other suture types. Complications observed with the reported technique include implant loosening and infection with a reported major complication rate similar to that of TPLO. So pretty straightforward case study. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. It is what it is with, with these types of studies. You can't really draw too much conclusion, but it is good to see that there are surgical options. And yeah, I mean, nothing wrong with, with placing a lateral suture technique for these dogs, especially if you're seeing the pivot shift from another from the other opposite leg or in surgery, you're getting a weird kind of clunking motion as you're manipulating the uh, knee joint once you place the TPLO. All right, thanks to those who uh, support the channel. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.